<laughs> okay. Hi, guys. Welcome to POV or My Therapist, the podcast where I vent, you listen, and you do not get paid. Um, did I just get off of Inst- on, uh, did I just get off of TikTok Live after having a little meltdown because my laptop was not working? Yes, it is. So we are going to try to record this this last time. Um, I made a few adjustments and I am praying, begging, hoping the universe will be kind to me today and let me record this motherfucking podcast. Because previously, ignore these fucking dogs hollering outside, previously, it would not let me record longer than a minute. As you can imagine, that was extremely frustrating for me, okay? Because literally, I tried recording five different times. Did it work? No. So I wanted to die. Simply put, okay? So it seems to be working better now. And I really hope that it fucking works because I really just want to work. I just want to record this podcast, y'all. That's it. That is. Now these people are being loud outside. Oh, that's really all I want to do. I've already like had such a fucking week. And for this to be happening on top of it, like I just not to be dramatic, but like I just really can't handle it. Like I'm a hot girl and I feel like I should not have to deal with having a hard life like I feel like when God made me this pretty he intended for me to fully benefit off of pretty privilege and have the easiest life possible so for anything for any small inconsiderate little irritation to happen within my life I just don't really think that that's fair for me I just simply think I'm too pretty to have to deal with anything that's like just like not what I want to deal with like you get what I'm saying I knew you would. You're hot too. I'm going to take, I'm going to guide us through three deep breaths right now. So we're going to do one inhale. Inhale. Okay. I I feel like I'm breathing wrong. Okay. Weird. (laughs) Another one. That one was very phlegmy because I forgot that I have been holding in a cry for the last hour. So that was very snotty. Um, I think my computer may be fixed because we're going on three minutes and it hasn't stopped. So thank the fucking Lord, I hope. Well, let's not get too excited. Uh, um, as I said earlier, I went on TikTok Live and I talked about a handful of things. Um, and I spoke about like how frustrated I kind of became with the podcast itself because I, I'm a very ambitious person. I have a lot of ambition. I have a whole life that I dream for myself. And, and now this podcast has kind of aligned itself into that more. Um, and I think what else was about to be like extremely frustrating for me was the simple fact that I look so good and the fact that nobody would see it was just about to be very disappointing for me and hard for me to admit and like deal with like and I'm already like getting emotional about it (sighs) just kidding I need to burp but um a lot has been happening this week and (sighs) I'm trying so hard to like center myself and kind of like focus and like zone into the podcast but like I did that so many times before only for my computer to fucking just pull me out of it and like it's it's been so frustrating and like so I'm trying to lock in right now and like really get my head where I want it to be but this week a lot's been going on um I saw the psychic for the last and final time and basically one of the things that she picked up on my energy before even like pulling cards for me was that I had like like I'm stuck like I feel mentally stuck I feel stuck where I am physically like um and specifically with the podcast she doesn't know that I do a podcast she just knows that there's an activity that I'm very good at that I enjoy doing that other people enjoy that I do and but I'm feeling stuck where I am and that like I wish like somebody would come in and like help me and like give me a blueprint and like kind of like show me what to do because I've never done this before I'm doing it by myself and like obviously like it's a learning curve it's a hard learning curve and like and I'm a person who likes to have all the answers 
uh example expect like that's why i'm going to see a psychic duh like you, you see what i'm saying you see the problem we talked about this in the last episode like tangible need for knowing things i don't enjoy the unknown i want to know what is going to happen i do not have any chill i don't like surprises i don't like not knowing what is going to happen i really don't i don't chill i don't go with the flow i need to know where the flow is going and what time the flow is leaving and what time the flow is getting there i want to know when the surprise is what the surprise is who is going to be there and why they wanted to give me a surprise when i said i didn't want a surprise i'm just that kind of person who needs to know the details of everything i am not calm i am not patient i do not enjoy the unknown i need to know what is unknown yesterday before i even knew that it was unknown do you get what I'm saying? That's the kind of person I am. I told my cousin today that if a movie has already been out, I will Google the end as I'm watching it. And he literally was so disgusted. <laughs> he was like, you're disgusting. I was like, you are disgusting. You enjoy not knowing shit. And that to me is an issue. Like, so, so she was basically saying that like, I had a lot of wand energy, a lot of blockage, a lot of that going on in my life. And she basically picked up on like on a lot of the anxieties that I had, but, but she said that somebody would be coming in, either it's like a mentor kind of relationship and they would kind of be like leading me into wish fulfillment and getting everything that I want. And they're going to be extremely helpful and knowledgeable and, and have a lot of resources for me, money, money, um, and all of these things. And then she kept pulling and kept pulling and kept pulling. And I think I mentioned that she basically told me who my soulmate was and girl, guess what? It went back around to my soulmate. And I'm like, I'm like, that's fine. And I'm like excited in a way, but I don't see how this relationship can happen because I know this person and I'm just like, it's not me. It's never me because I'm perfect. Duh. It's not me. It's definitely them. And I'm just like, I have no idea. There, like a literal miracle would, I, I said it before, I was like a literal miracle would have to happen for this person to view me in a different way than they do now, just because they've known me for so long and mm -hmm. they've, what the fuck do you want? Just because they've known me for so long and they've seen me in so many different phases of my life. And it's just like, I, I don't see like, the give and take that would need to happen for it to happen. But then something did happen where they were like openly admitted to seeing me in a new light. And I was like, okay, this is weird. But yeah, but over the weekend also, there was like the fact that the moon is going into Scorpio or no, the moon is going into Taurus, sorry. And the whole point of it that she reiterated to me was that it was letting go of things and being okay if the things that we really want don't work out and releasing things because we have so much faith that they will come back is the best thing that we can do. Um, yeah, really hard thing for me to do as an anal retentive person. Okay. So she told me that and she basically, also she pulled, this is hilarious, but she pulled cards on the guy that is my soulmate, confirmed soulmate energy. Um, I'm saying quote in quotes because I'm like passively aggressive, angry. Um, not that I don't believe her because I do, but so she did that and then she was like, yeah, this is not happening now. Like this is not something that's going to happen tomorrow. She's like, you need to kill the thought that this is going to be something that he wakes up, sees you in a new light and you're in love and you're going to be popping out his babies and sucking his dick every night. Like that's not what's happening here. She was like, this is a long journey ahead. And she was like, and you're going to have to accept that it's going to take time. And she was like, and you need to detach so, you know, not the things you want to hear. Obviously, you want to hear that, hey, I know who your soulmate is. And you do too, because you've always felt that. You've always felt that feeling with them. And now it's undeniable. You can't hide it anymore. Um, they're going to wake up tomorrow and tell you that they're in love with you. And they're also going to have the ring ready. Uh, and they're going to be ready to make you their wife and for you to have all of their babies. So, obviously, that's what you want to hear. But that was not what I heard. And I think it knocked me back down to earth. And I and I definitely feel like I do feel like a level of like space from it. Because like 
hearing the same thing so many times in different ways, when I tell you this came up three different times in this hour to the point where the last thing that like the last card she pulled was a, it had like a paragraph attached to it and the paragraph literally summarized this thing and she pulled it from like a deck of like 400 fucking cards and I was just like, I get the hint, I get the hint, let it go, like, you know, let it go, so I'm working on that, I'm doing that, (sighs) okay, so, and I don't know, like, I think I don't know. I don't know how I feel about any of this. I feel at this point that I know too much. I feel like I've just know. I know too much. I've seen too much. I'm ready for my lobotomy. Like dead ass. Like I'm ready for my lobotomy. Like if I could lobotomize, I get a lobot. If I could be lobotomized right now, and just like kind of like shut off the part of my brain that like has this like really intense need for love, I would do it yesterday. I really would because like it's so painful. Like. Being a person who wants love and just never being able to get it is such a painful experience. And I get it. Like, people tell me all the time, decenter men from your life. And, like, okay, first of all, I'm just going to get into this rant real quick, okay? Um, I hear that all the time. And I think a lot of, like, people don't realize that, like, men are not the center of my existence. I talk about this on the podcast because this is my place to get that out. But they're not the center of my existence. I don't perform for men. I don't leave my house thinking every day that I'm going to meet my soulmate. That's not how that works. Like, I'm not your little friend who can't go three seconds without having a boyfriend. I've been single my entire life. My feelings have never been reciprocated. My love for someone has never been reciprocated. After 27 years of that, and knowing from the time that you were, like, extremely young that what you've always wanted is to be a mother... After that 27 years of experiencing that, it gets to a point where you just, you're confused. You're confused. Like I, sometimes I genuinely ask myself, like if I am, if I am reaping the bet, the, if I am reaping what I sowed in a past life, because for my life to be so loveless, and I'm not even talking about love for men, like I have had a very difficult familial life and like there is definitely an absence of love there so you know and I don't owe it to anybody to explain that but it's like it's it's shown up in every aspect of my life this lack of love that I really yearn for um and you know so it's like it's not I think the easiest thing to talk about is men actually is my singledom because if I start talking about you know lack of familial love lack of familial understanding love that came too late from people that is hard for me to accept now I'm just gonna spend the entire time crying like boohoo crying and I know it for a fact because I started talking about it with my friend the other day and oh bitch I was it was given (laughs) like (laughs) it, it was given roots crying okay so And I also feel like that's not something I owe anybody on a public forum. Like, I don't owe anybody that knowledge of me, that depth of me, and I'm not going to give it to them. So, um, yeah, if you think to even write the comment, decenter men from your life, or focus on yourself, or love yourself first, or um, stop focusing on relationships... I just want you to shove your phone up your booty hole. Let's get that out of the way. Um, period. Um, so, you know, that, it, it's just been like a hard journey. And I feel like this podcast really should be, you know, renamed Divine's Journey to Find Love, whatever. But my, so my psychic said that I will be in love by my birthday. She gonna be shaking her ass um in a tongue on a yacht for her bad day in Zubai. So we'll see. Um as of right now, like I'm releasing I'm trying to like release all the all the things that I feel are blockages. Um 
I'm trying to remove the anxious feeling that I feel. And I actually think like that's kind of subsided a little bit. So like I'm just trying to be like more chill and like I'm trying to be calm. I'm trying to do things because I enjoy them. Um, because I really want to do them and not because I think that, you know, it's going to give me money or a career or whatever. Um, you know, so I'm trying to do that, but for today's podcast, I thought I would do something fun, which is we fit a manifest or like we're, we're basically going to, is it manifesting? Maybe it's a form of manifesting, but I you can do it if it's a, if whatever your sexuality is, go off. Um, but I am essentially just going to talk about all the things that I want in a person. Okay. Um, in a man particularly, uh, this is something that my therapist had me do a while back. And this is something my, my therapist had me do this a while back. And I sat down and I wrote down everything that I wanted out of a man. And, um, and she was like, these are the things that you need to do not do, but like that you need to remember every time you meet a guy and, you know, non-negotiables, you know, and that's what got my ass fucked up because I met that man who had me so fucked up and he met, he met like five out of six qualifications and the one qualification he didn't meet or at the surface, because I didn't know him as well as I do now, but from on the surface, it looked like he meant five out of six qualifications. You know, the one qualification he didn't meet the money qualification. And that's where I went wrong. Okay. That man was broke. That's what I get. (laughs) That's what I get. And I was over here trying to convince myself, telling myself, well, he's not where he's going to be in his job yet. So obviously he's not going to be making that much money yet. But like in the future, bitch, we, we plan for the future. Sure. But when it comes to means, we need to see what we see now. We cannot be making, we need to look at trajectory and not potential. Okay. It's given trajectory and not potential. And I even had myself fucked up over that because I was looking at him and I was like, oh, that's his trajectory that I made up in my head that I decided that that was the potential he had. Even when he definitely told me that he was not going to stay at that job. Okay. Like we're never going to get into my like stupidity, but yeah. So now that like I learned from that and like, I, I, Y'all, when I tell you, I've never had such an experience where, like, it really hit me in the face that, like, the universe, one, does have my back, even though sometimes, like, she doesn't really feel like it, even though sometimes I feel like I'm fucking free-falling, but it was a nice reminder that I, I need to know that I'm deserving of the things that I want, that I'm not asking for a lot, I'm not asking for a lot, and I'm definitely not asking for too much, and him not having one of the things on my list was too much of a compromise and I deserved more because baby by the time that whole situation ended he had none of the things I wanted on my list except being tall and that's not enough that's not enough (laughs) being tall is not enough okay and I learned that bitch okay so um yeah so I'm basically going to list off all the things that I want in a man and you're going to do the same thing and, um, or the things you want in a person. And we're basically going to be making our guideline for manifesting our dream person. Okay. Because I really feel like that's something that I want to do. Okay. Cause I don't want to think about my person who's quote unquote my soulmate, but I do want to think about the things that I want, like in a person. And so if at the end of the day, they end up not being my soulmate and it's somebody else, then you know, I can see that. I can see clearly because I'm looking for attributes. I'm looking for parts of a person. I'm not looking for a specific person. I'm looking for the things that they have, for the qualities that they have that I like. And and I can see those things in other people because this person, like, I love a lot of the qualities that he has. But I have to be okay with at the end of the day, if he doesn't do the emotional work that he needs to do to be my person, that if somebody else comes along and they have done the work and they have those same attributes, that I'm okay with being with somebody else. You know what I'm saying? That I'm not tied to an idea of who I'm supposed to be with. So that's what we're going to do. First things first, though, uh, should we start with? physical attributes or emotional i'm gonna start with emotional so i don't seem shallow (laughs) um because it's gonna get shallow (laughs) 
But we're going to start with emotional attributes or like um, the inner stuff, not the outer stuff. So I definitely will say that one of the inner things that like is really important to me is I like a man who is a leader. I like somebody who I feel safe in their presence. Safety is such a huge thing for me. And I think like, not I think, but every time somebody asks me what I look for in a man, without a doubt, one of the first things out of my mouth is I feel safe around them. Okay. I love feeling safe around a man. I really do. And I don't just mean because they're big and they're tall and they're strong, but because I know that they're going to stand up for me if they need to. A lot of the times, like I, and I think like it's even prevalent dating in your own race. I date out of my race and there's times where like somebody that I'm dating who's a minority, like they're uncomfortable standing up for me because I don't know why, but they are. They're uncomfortable standing up for me. And sometimes that even happens within my own race. And that's not something I really appreciate. But I've had instances where, you know, a man does stand up for me and like that shit is sexy. So I definitely want somebody who I feel safe around, who if somebody's going to say some microaggression, they're going to call it out. They're going to be like, what did you just say to my girlfriend? say that bad or I'm gonna drag you in the middle of the road like like I want that safety I want to feel like if we're fucking and I'm like oh no I don't want to have sex anymore that I'm not scared to say that <laughs> okay I want to feel safe in your hands that you're just gonna be like okay that's fine let's do something else that is so important to me I don't think I even have to explain why um Safety is a very big thing for me. I like men who are leaders. And this is the thing about like men being leaders is, you know, people aren't perfect, right? And I actually had this discussion with my sister. My very single ass literally was like, you know, I think I know why a lot of marriages don't work out. Me, my single self telling that to my married sister uh, and her being like, yeah, okay, bitch, I'm all ears. Let's listen with your zero years of experience. Um... But I think that, like, a lot of times, like, men think that being a leader is being like, yeah, I know how to lead. I'm a big guy. I know how to do all these things. I can put a person in their place. No biggie. But I think, like, sometimes being a leader also means that, like, you admit when you're wrong. That you, you're able to look at an atmosphere and kind of take into consideration everything that's happening. And also you know, help people grow in a way. Like, that's what I think of when I think about being a leader. I'm not thinking about somebody who's bossy. I'm not thinking about a, you can be a boss and not be a leader. Um, and I also think that sometimes like, sometimes men have to like, have to be put like, I don't know. You kind of have to like, you kind of have to like, I don't know what this motion is that I'm doing, but I feel like you kind of have to like wiggle them into their leadership because I do think a lot of men are insecure and there's a lot of like good meaning men who like are insecure and they're scared and they're shy. And like, I think like sometimes like as a woman, I haven't had this experience, but I've seen it a lot in a lot of my friends' relationships that they're like, why doesn't he do this? Why doesn't he do that? Why does... You know, men are very fragile creatures and I feel like sometimes, and I don't think this even goes for men, but like if you want somebody to be a leader, I think sometimes you have to give them a position of leadership. And I don't mean like you're in charge today, fix it. I mean being like, hey, wouldn't you, do you think it'd be a great idea if we did this and this and this? If it's a man, they're definitely going to be like, yeah. And then once that thing works out really well, they're going to be like, I am so smart. I thought of this thing. Hmm. I'm such a smart person. And they're going to feel, they're going to kind of like gain a confidence from that. It gives them like a confidence boost. And I feel like sometimes like people need their confidence kind of like built up a little bit. So they start having the confidence in their decision making because you gave them choices that are both right choices. And then they picked the right choice, even though they were both right choices. And then they're like, oh yeah, like I have a confidence boost, I'm this, I'm that. And I know like that can sound like, you know, uh, very childish and like a little too nurturing for some people because they're like, I'm not raising a man, like I'm not going to do that. But I think there's a little bit of give and take. Nobody's fucking perfect. 
Okay, that's it. I'm saying that. Because I'm, I think, like, that's the thing that I see so much, like, in a lot of, like, my friend's stuff. is like, their man not having enough confidence in, like, themselves. And, like, life is long and people have issues. And if you're, maybe you should be, I don't know, I'm willing to do that. If you're not, that's cool with you. But, um... But I also think, like, this is the thing, though. I think for that to work, you have to have a level of putting your pride aside. And a lot of people are not able to put their pride aside. If I realize that, like, my dude's issue is, like, he doesn't have enough confidence in himself, and I do that, and then he gets combative with me because I, he's like, oh, you don't think I can do that? Like, I'm not smart enough to do that. Like, why are you talking to me like that? Like, if they are not able to put their pride aside, then I'm like, I'm not doing that. I'm not, I'm not helping you do anything. Like, what the fuck? But... I think, like, if you're able to put your pride aside and they're able to put their pride aside, then, you know, it can work out. I think my camera... The next thing that I would want in my lava is somebody who's, like, compassionate, who is really patient because I do not have a lot of focus. And, you know, I don't like people getting mad at me over things that, like... I just forgot to do or like stuff like that. Like you don't want a partner who's ever going to yell at you. And I don't want that. I want somebody who's calm, who's collected, who literally has the composure of Marty Byrne or Byrne, Marty Bird. I need somebody with the composure of Marty Bird. Nothing fucking throttles this man. Like he is so calm. He is so calm and relaxed. And, like, I know Jason Bateman is not our idea of, like, the sexiest man on earth, but him as Marty Bird is very sexy to me because he is so patient. And, like, even when Wendy, the amount of times Wendy has deserved a fucking bop in the head, and he has just looked at that woman and said, Wendy, what were you thinking? (laughs) I need a man with that kind of composure. I need a man with that kind of calm, with that kind of patience and practicality, okay? Like, every time I watch Ozark, I'm just like, damn, like, where are you in the real world? Like, mine is the drug cartel stuff. But, like, him as a person, like, his absolute composure and, like, the fact that, like, nothing, bro, it's so funny, nothing throws him off. He gets insulted in his face all the time. And he, like, knows that that, that doesn't make him. And that, like, that's such a cool thing to me. So somebody with that kind of composure, somebody who's extremely kind. And I say kind because anybody can be nice. I think we all learn the hard way a lot of times that niceness is an adjective and niceness is something that anybody can decide to do. Ted Bundy was very nice when he decided to stop on the side of the road and asked women if they needed help. That was very nice of him. What was not nice was when he killed them. That was not nice at all. And he was not choose. He chose not to be nice when he decided to kill them. So, uh, yeah, fundamental difference between niceness and I think kindness. I feel like kindness is inherent. I feel like kindness, um, there's a lot of physicality that embodies kindness. I think you know, you can always kind, you can always tell when somebody is kind. It is like there is an outpouring of love that comes out of them. Like I want somebody who has that outpouring of love that comes out of them, that they, they are gentle, they are patient, they are kind, they are true, they are honest, they don't gaslight, they don't manipulate, they are humble and they are human and they are divine. Like, and I, I really mean that. I, and I also, I also obviously want somebody who, when I am open and when I have love pouring out of me, that they take it all in, that it fills their cup and that they are happy to have such a full cup and they pour that love into other people. Like I want somebody who's open to that, who's accepting of that, who is who like is just tranquil and like has love to give, who has fun, who isn't insecure, who, and I think like saying insecure and going back to what I said earlier about like needing their confidence built up. I think those are two very different things. 
Sometimes I need my confidence built up. Sometimes I need a boost, but I also know when I'm being insecure. Insecurity, there is a, it's not your fault, like at all. I think in my, my moments when I was very insecure, I was kind of vile. I was an angry person because insecurity comes with anxiety. Insecurity is you're scared of who you are, of who people perceive you to be. So you are on edge. You're you're angry that people are perceiving you. You're anxious that people are perceiving you. And that anxiety, it really turns into different things. You can lash out at people. You can cry. You can be mad. All of those unpleasant trees, like And those are the offspring of insecurity, or at least they were for me. So, but you know, when I need my confidence built up, I find that I'm a little bit more tender, that I'm a little bit more skittish, that I'm a little, I'm not afraid to be like, can you please tell me I'm pretty? Like, I just need you, I need to hear it. I'm in my head. I need somebody else to tell me that I'm pretty. Can you say it to me? I do that all the time. I, the amount of times that I'm like, do you want to hold hands? <laughs> and the person that I'm definitely saying it to, they know that it's not a question, but a request. Do you want to hold hands? I do that to my dog too. I'm like, Presh, would you like to hold hands? I take her little paw and she's like, get the fuck off of me. And I'm like, thank you for holding my hand. Like, I think like there's a difference in that. Um, what other things? They're generous because let me tell you something. A broke nigga could never love me. A broke nigga. Like they just, oh my God, men who are broke and men who are not generous. Like actually, no, let me rephrase that because you can have a lot of money and not be, and be, and not be a generous person and it's giving broke energy. It's, you can drive a Lambo cause you're cheap. And you're not generous. It's giving broke. It's giving insecure. It's giving Mr. Krabs. Okay? No one wants that. That is one of the ugliest things. Okay? And I always find that. I always think like, I'm like, you're going to lose your money. Because money is like water. It should go and come back freely. You give and you get. You give and you get. But you're so goddamn stingy with it. And the only person that you want to spend it on is yourself. And you don't want to help nobody. And I'm not over here asking for a handout. I mean, like, they don't want to give money to homeless people because they be like, you deserve to be homeless. You going to hell for that. Just so you know. So, somebody who's generous, who, because, like, think about it also. Like, can you imagine, imagine you're with a man. He's rich. He got money. He's not generous, though. He may buy you nice things when it suits him and his cause. Okay, imagine you got kids with that person, and then you got to go back and forth over who I paid for that shoe last week if your relationship is not going well and, like, you guys have to, like, deal with having kids together. Yeah, well, I paid for his shoes last week. You should pay for his shoes next week. I paid for his lunch yesterday. Why don't you, man, like what you have money. Can you imagine like having to go back and forth over these things? Like these things that are just things that do not make or break your life. That's that kind of broke shit that I'm staying away from. Like, cause when I, you know, a lot of, like I put in my, I have a number, bitch. I have a monthly number income of how much I need my man to make a month. Okay. And yeah, a guy can come along and he can make that much money and, uh, divine will have to stay very far away from him. If he's got broke man energy, if he is penny pinching, and counting every single thing that he does for you. Want to come at you randomly and during the weekday with a text that said, I bought dinner the last four times. When are you going to pay me with some coochie? No, no. Like, don't do that. Don't. Can you imagine you're with somebody? And like, I'm a very generous person. So like, I don't really think about like money like that. Like, I, if I think of you and I see something and I'm like, oh, you'd like this. I buy it. And I save it for you and I give it to you whenever. Um, I'm not really a penny pincher like that. Because I feel like people who do that, they're 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 constantly think it's going tit for tat, tit for tat. Like I did this, you should do this next time. I did this, you should do this next time. Like I paid for that, you pay for that, I pay for that, you pay eh. 
I understand that there are people who do take advantage of that and you always want to make sure that like you're not being taken advantage of but like sometimes I watch it unfold in front of my eyes and I'm like you know anybody else would be insulted but like I can see where that insecurity comes from and I'm not gonna hold it against you because I'm gonna keep being generous I mean like this I'm just talking like in general relationships it's not flying with me at all um because, like, just imagine you have a kid together and then y'all gotta go tit for tat over everything with the kid. Like, that man will be like, yeah, I I gave him 10 cents worth of milk. What? Like, no. Okay? So, anyways, I, in my diary, I have a monthly amount that my man needs to make. A month. Okay? And it's not no small number either. Um, thank you. Period. <laughs> Material girls. Okay? Um, because I like nice things. I like comfort. And, like, it's funny because, like, it's funny because my want for a wealthy husband does not necessarily come from me wanting material things. It comes from me surviving the recession. And it comes from me knowing that when I have kids, his children, I want to enjoy my little friends. I don't want to be a struggling mother. I don't want to have somebody that I'm arguing with over money. I want for the moment I get pregnant for my husband to be like, oh, let me get you like a nanny or like a cook and not a nanny because I'm going to leave my kids with them and like just go away. No, not at all. A nanny because children, it takes a village to raise children. And they need a lot of attention and they need a lot of care. And it's tiring for one person to do it. Okay? So just to have that comfort. And even if I got a nanny for my man to be like, I'm, I want to be an active part in our kids' lives. What do you want me to do? Let me do this thing before you even ask me to do it. Like that girl, that I'm, I'm basically talking to fantasy right now. But you know what? I believe in God. I believe God can give me what I'm asking for. I ain't asking for much. <laughs> I'm not asking for much. Just a kind man. That's a lot. <laughs> it's a kind, rich man. In today's America, I may be asking God for too much. But, you know, knock on wood. Mm-hmm. Um, what else? Should we jump into the physical attributes? I'm, I'm trying to remember if I covered everything with the emotional, obviously loving, affectionate. Yeah. Cause I'm, 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 I'm a real touchy person. I'm sorry. I need a lot of love. I need a lot of hugs. I need lots of kisses. I need, I need it all the time. Like I don't get tired of that. Like that's, I, that's a surprising thing, but I need a lot of that. Now to the physical attributes. <laughs> At least six foot, because I would like a few little athletes, you know. I'd like to have, like, a little soccer player, child. Uh, maybe a basketball player, if my man is really tall. Um, Maybe a tennis player, I don't know. It's a bit bougie, just a bit bougie like that. Or football player. I feel like they'd be a football player if they take after their mummy and they, you know, get all the thick thighs and the ass and stuff like that. Um... Obviously, somebody tall, someone handsome, with a good head of hair, even though baldness does um, live on the mother's side. Um, what else? Obviously, I want somebody like Debonair, who like carries himself really well, who dresses really nice. Um, you know, I I hear this all the time when people are like, we're getting into the physical, physical, okay? Um, does size matter? Yes, I think size matters. And I've also, I wrote this down in my journal. Yes, I did. I described my man's PP to a T. <laughs> Period. I did. I did. Because as a, you know, as a recovering whore, uh, I had a, have, I, I've had a lot of experience, uh, with different shapes and sizes. And I get the question a lot when guys are like, does size matter? Yes, it does. Because to fill the void left in my soul that not having a father has left me, there is a size requirement. And I don't think that that is something I can settle on. So, yeah. Um, 
I don't even know where to like, how do you segue from that? I don't know. I don't even understand how I segue to that. I, that was a very blunt entrance. Um, but yeah, yeah, yes. My man creepy is very detailed in my journal. Um, what else? Obviously like pretty eyes, nice teeth, but the thing about appearances that is like, it doesn't even matter because if you meet somebody nice enough, I don't know if your brain does this, but mine does. That man could be the ugliest person upon first meet, okay? As I get to know them, the more handsome they became. Like, dead ass. The more, like, like I, like, this actually happened to me in college where there was this guy, upon first glance, not my type, short, bald, just not it. Like, just not any description of anything divine would ever be into like you just would never believe it honestly but the more I got to know him and like I would have these moments when I'm looking into his eyes and I was just like wow like you're literally the most beautiful person on earth he was short and bold but you know what he was kind he was loving he was a good fucking person so yeah my brain you know she put on she put on a couple pairs of rose colored glasses <laughs> a couple pairs of rose colored glasses so yeah yeah it does happen so i think at the end of the day like obviously if the person is just kind and they meet all of the internal requirements without a doubt i might be out here walking around with a little bit of a stanley tucci you know what i'm saying with a little bit of a Truman Capote looking ass man. Um, yeah, I think at the end of the day, like what really matters is like how they're going to treat you and how you're going to feel. Cause the brain will play tricks on your eyes, dude. It's fine. It doesn't matter. And God willing, your children will take after you, you know, you know, it's funny. Cause I, my mom, she tells this story all the time. My mom is ruthless. Okay. And she, one time she was dating a guy and he said something really fresh to her. And her first fucking thing that came out of her mouth was, you're lucky I already had my kids. Because, yeah, she was like, you're lucky I already had my kids because if I was looking for a man to have children with, you would not be in the running. Mm Mm-hmm. 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 Um, but I, you know, I always pray to God that like my kids take after me. Mm -hmm. It's so funny though, because the other day my sister, she, um, I don't know even how to describe this, but anyways, her husband works in like, he works in proximity to professional football players. And she was telling me how she met this football player who was so cute. And she's like, oh my God, he's so your type. He's so adorable. You should definitely like, I don't know what she was trying to say, but she basically was like, I need to show you a picture of him, whatever, whatever. She shows me a picture of this man. Why does he look exactly like me? <laughs> he looks dead ass like me. And I'm like, I think maybe you thought that would be a good match because he looks just like me. And I've never been one of those people who was interested in dating people who look like me. And like, and by that, I mean like I was pretty light skinned as a child. I'm more like red now. I'm more like red now, but when I was younger, I was pretty light skinned and like, I was never really interested in like light skinned men like that. Like it's either, it's weird. Cause like it's either he has to be like really dark, like dark skinned, like very, very like chocolatey for me or white. No in between. Obviously like that there's a spectrum and like other like races play into that. But like, I'm never really attracted to like light skinned people um, not that there's anything wrong with them. Like there's p- plenty of people who are gorgeous and stuff like that, but it's just like never been my preference. Um, and even like within every sub genre of men, like this girl on TikTok, she broke down how, um, how she likes the different type of men she likes. And she had like the quirky black boy and like the, um, the, uh, metrosexual black man and like the so funny he'll laugh you out your drawers you know 
as I'm saying that, she had Drake in the so funny he'll laugh or so corny he'll laugh you out your drawers. And I just realized that Drake is a light skinned man and I am attracted to Drake. But to me, Drake looks kind of like Arab. You know? But I don't know. Anyways, moving on. Um, what other physical attributes are there? We already said tall. Honestly, tall is what matters. Tall, handsome, well dressed. Uh, dick exactly how I described in my journal and nice, generous. This is like the fucking bar is on the ground. This is not a lot. It's not a lot. And the funny thing is you will have so many people being like, you're asking for way too much. You want a man? Number one, there's the first problem is you want a man. You want a man who's kind. You're already... You have $20 to spend. You're at $18, okay? You want a man who's kind, okay? You want a man who is, uh, has money. You've already, that's another dollar, bitch. You are at $19, you have $20. You want a guy who's thoughtful, 50 cents. You want him to be loving. You want him to be, uh, to put his pride aside and work through your issues together. That costs another hundred dollars. You are at negative a hundred dollars in the shitter. Okay. You're running, you don't have money. You're in debt. Actually, you're, you've asked for too much. So yeah. So I put these things on my journal and the main point of it is so that when somebody comes, I can kind of weigh my options and see like, Hey, these are my fundamental things that I want in a person. What are you missing any of that? And what are they? And is it something that I can overlook? Obviously, if a guy is like five, seven, yes, we can overlook that. You know what I'm saying? And it's not even anything that needs to be overlooked. I'm five, three. Everybody is taller than me. What are we truly overlooking? Nothing because we're short. So, you know, it's not, you're not, what are you losing? Nothing. You're fine. Okay. But if a guy comes along and he's, he's not that kind, uh, maybe what seemed like an endearing assholey behavior before really turns into, oh, wait, it's not endearing because you don't have the kindness that should, that anybody can have, even people who kind of have an assholey behavior. It's not endearing. You're actually just an asshole point blank. Um, that's a problem. If they're not kind, did I just say that? If they're not like, you know, open, if they're not loving, if, if they find it weird that you're so loving, you know? So it's kind of like, it makes it easier to spot red flags. And, um, and you know, I think knowing that information, we're still going to steer. We're still going to steer. I steer all the time. And, you know, I, I never want to come on this podcast and pretend like I'm a perfect person who never gets it wrong. Cause boy, do I get it wrong, wrong, wrong. Um, but yeah, so that's what I wanted to mean. I feel like maybe this episode may have been a little bit blabby, but also like my brain is just like so out of it. Like y'all, I really was upset earlier. Like you have no idea. Like I really was upset. Like my, it wasn't working. I didn't know why. And I realized the reason why it's not, it wasn't working was because I guess this port on the left side of my laptop is fucked up. So I, I, I don't know why it would just like, unplug itself every minute or so but we've been recording for a full hour now and it's fine um I was really upset and like I think like it kind of drained my energy like it drained the excitement and the focus that I had when I was ready to sit down and do the podcast and after trying to record like five different times and it just not working I think like that really that really just like kind of messed with me but, um, yeah, so we've gotten to the end of the podcast. We've built our dream person. We're going to manifest. We're going to, we're going to take that. We're going to close up the book and then we're going to put it away. And, um, when somebody comes into our life, we're going to revisit it. And then if it's this person that we want, we're going to, you know, see what happens. Um, and I will definitely be making, I, I'm not going to see my psychic anytime soon, girl. Um, I will be seeing her in fucking December of 2022, because if I see her anytime sooner, I may just like fucking think myself into a fucking tizzy. Like, and I can't afford that already. I'm already mentally weak as it is. So, um, yeah, I think I've known too much at this point. I've, I've seen enough. I've known enough. 
it's it's been a ride thank you very much i'd like to get off now and speaking of getting off we're getting off the podcast right now um so thank you for joining today i had a lovely time with you i love you so much baby um if you're listening on apple Podcasts, please leave a review please leave a review just be like hey divine I love you. Bye. Just leave a little review, leave a kind word, say something nice, you know, um, and leave a rating. If you're listening on Spotify, leave a rating. If you're listening on YouTube, leave a like and leave a comment that says we made it. We made it. Okay. We made it. We did the podcast this week. We made it. Um, if you're, if you got to the end of the video, right, we made it. Okay. Um, subscribe, turn on that notification bell so you know when I post. Um, and what else? Am I missing one? Oh yeah. Follow me on Instagram at VineFilo and Twitter at VineFilo and TikTok at Dphile, D-P-H-I-L-E. It is always a joy to spend this time with you, to talk to you, to love on you, to, you know, express how I'm feeling. Thank you for being here with me this week. And I'm happy that we could be here this week because boy, was it a fucking close call. Okay. I think it's, it, it was just a little bit of test to the universe. I guess, but everything happens for a reason and I'm thankful for it all. I'm extremely thankful that I could be here with you because I really wanted to be here with you this week. Um, so yeah, I love you. I really do. (laughs) I really do. (laughs) Y'all are my friends and I love y'all so much. Like I really do. And like, it just feels like such a warm hug every time we get together. It's my favorite part of the week. And like, you know, on TikTok earlier today, somebody said, why don't you take a break? And I was like, Besides the fact that, like, when I, I have a habit of when I take breaks, I quit. Uh, not, don't want to do that. Um, but also, like, I feel like I'd miss you. Like, I'd miss my friends. Like, I'd miss seeing the comments that you leave on YouTube. Like, I would miss that. Like, I've, I, like, we've gotten so familiar with each other. Like, I know you guys. Like, I really do. So, yeah, I think I would miss it. So, I love you. I will talk to you later. Goodbye, lovey. Mwah. Big tight hug for the week. Bye.